Hi, hello. Welcome to uh, the Elbaz presentation. So I am uh, Pravakar. I work for uh, PayPal. Uh, this is Anand. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I I joined the Elbaz team like uh, recently. So I wanted to share like what are all the things that we have done uh, putting Elbaz in prod in uh, uh, PayPal. So the agenda is, uh, I'll first explain how the, the, the Elbaz is uh, deployed within PayPal, and then the customization that we have done uh, to make it work for our use cases, and the integration with the uh, uh, DNS. So some numbers to show like uh, the, uh, the op open stack in prod in PayPal. We have about 8,000 uh, hypervisors which translates to like 400k cores, running 82,000 VMs. And we have uh, hundreds of LBs, which resulted in like thousands of uh, WIPs being created. It's actively created, and uh, most of the time in QA, you can see uh, WIPs being created and deleted often. So this is the architecture that we have at PayPal. So we use more than one vendor for uh, the actual LB. So each uh, provider will have their own way of integrating with LBAS. For example, uh, for the provider who has the LB device A, so whenever there is an API call to get a, a, to create a, a VIP or add a member or pool like that, the corresponding plugin in case the provider has implemented that it puts a, me me uh, a message in the bus saying that to create a, a corresponding VIP or odd member or whatever action is. So which results in, so the, the, the provider has written some uh, uh, agents which is actually polling on that bus, which reads the message and makes the corresponding call to the uh, backend LB so that the actual action happened. So here, to have Hache, we are running, uh, 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 by design of this particular provider, one LB device is managed by one agent. So if the agent goes down, uh, the, the thing won't work. So how we, we are running is like, we are running uh, for the same LB, we will run uh, uh, the actual agent in Hache mode, using pacemaker. So if the one of the agent goes down, the pacemaker identifies and the another agent comes up and then reads the message bus, and then the work is done properly. So once the LB uh, uh, does the actual work, it uh, puts back the same message bus, the bus which is uh, written to the actual uh, LBAS DB. For the other provider, they have provided a controller which, ta which takes care of all those things for us. So, which is like a simple, uh, simple stuff. But uh, the controller is running on, not on HA mode. <coughs> so, because there is no uh, uh, asynchronous message passing involved here. So, we, are, uh, uh, we have our own uh, uh, implementation to have the controller in HA mode. So, this is the overall architecture. So, when you talk about the enhancements that we did, or the customization we did on uh, LBAS to make it work for uh, PayPal. So uh, we introduced this uh, IP reusability for WIPs. I will go through what that means. And we added SSL support uh, for the creation of uh, search, SSL search and uh, actual attaching the search to the LB. And we add some more uh, uh, customization to the member health monitoring for the LB members. And uh, uh, we integrated with the NOVA whenever the instant deletion happens, the correspondingly, the member is uh, removed from the LB. And we introduced some of the uh, scheduler changes. Uh, I will go through each of uh, them in detail. So basically, uh, in a normal case, uh, the same IP uh, you cannot use uh, uh, for the, within a tenant. The same IP cannot be used for two WIPs. But we introduced a feature in which you can have a port to uh, map more than uh, uh, one VIP per IP. 
So these are all the uh, SSL thing that we did. Uh, we have all the CRUD operations for uh, uh, search, the private keys, and the search chains. And we have the corresponding uh, uh, UI changes in the horizon where you can go upload your search and keys. And the same as associate and dissociate SSL search to the VIPs. We have uh, both the CLI uh, based on, uh, we have HTTP APIs and corresponding uh, uh, a Python CLI client too. As I mentioned, we have the Horizon UI customization where you can go and add, the, you can do all those things in the UI too. So for the, when, the, uh, when, when it comes to member health monitoring, uh, currently you have to create uh, uh, for each LB a monitor, but we, we have a flag shared in which when you on, on onboarding time itself, you can say, uh, this monitor is shared across VIPs. So whenever you create the VIP, you can select the shared uh, monitor to be used. And currently there is no, the V1 uh, LBAS thing, does not, uh, LBAS API does not have a, a customization for getting the receive string from the, whenever the, uh, there is a health check happening on the members, what it has to check for the uh, receive string. Currently in the UI and there is a API also to say what, uh, what the actual receive string should look like. So, uh, so we have done, uh, there are a lot of things to do in the scheduler, but we have done some enhancement so that uh, uh, it, it solves the purpose for us currently. So we can do, uh, basically you can do uh, scheduling based on the uh, VPC, the virtual private cloud. For example, we run more than one VPC. Uh, for example, you can say uh, for dev or QA or, or, or some, some other stuff like external users. So for, uh, you can basically, each uh, VPC is going to have a different uh, LB device to be managed. So you have to first select which LB to be used for this particular VPC. So it works like, a, a exactly like a normal scheduler, where there's a filter scheduler, which based on the VPC, it selects a bunch of uh, LBs. And based on uh, capacity of the current LB, it will select uh, what is the available, uh, where the, the LB device, which has the lower capacity will be allocated and then the corresponding thing will be happening. The, the basically, the add, addition of waves or the uh, and other things will happen on the particular uh, uh, LB. This is exactly uh, like we were uh, getting a hypervisor for a particular instance creation. So this is how it looks like. So uh, whenever there is a need to do some uh, web creation or the pool creation, it goes through this uh, list of uh, schedulers. Uh, the, for example, as I told previously, uh, we have the VPC uh, filter scheduler, which which give you the corresponding provider. So based on that provider, the plugin that I showed uh, like two slides back, the corresponding plugin uh, will be used so that uh, the actual VIP is created or the, uh, in the corresponding LB device. So it runs through the list of uh, schedule, filter schedulers and then finally the LB device is selected and then used. So the DNS integration, yeah, whenever uh, you create a, a, the VIP, the corresponding uh, 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 A record and the PTO record has to be created on the DNS. So for that, uh, we use the same message bus. So we, we have uh, our internal product, uh, uh, it's code named Starch. And in some ACs, we have Starch running, and some ACs, we have Designate, which consumes this notification and creates the corresponding A and PTO records in the backend uh, uh, DNS servers. So these are the works that uh, currently we are uh, uh, doing. The, uh, there is no bulk APIs. For example, you cannot give uh, a set of uh, WIPs to be created at a single time. We have to go through a loop. Your, uh, uh, the corresponding the API, the Neutron API that you create has to uh, do that thing. But so are we, we are working on a bulk APIs. And we are also, uh, we have uh, done already the composite APIs in our uh, in-house load, ba load balancer management system, where you can tell the whole uh, uh, set of uh, uh, your pool name, your members, and the ECV checks, and the members, how they are going to check in a single JSON, and then it goes through the whole thing and then creates. Uh, so we are, we, are, we are getting that in the LBAS too. And we are doing some migration on the V2, like currently we are running on V1. And as I told, uh, currently we have only two uh, filter scheduler, one for the capacity and one for the VPC. 
So we had to do for uh, other things that I mentioned, like SLA or tenant-based scheduling. And the quota support, uh, for example, here the, now there is no uh, uh, quota support for the tenants. For example, this tenant can create only this many uh, whips. So we are working on that quota, quota support also. And other major thing that uh, uh, we see is that uh, sync issues. Uh, when I say sync issues, it's like you create a whip using uh, the corresponding plugin. And the actual LB is uh, doing the health check. And uh, for example, say one member went down, that data is not actually reflected in the LBAS DB. So you query LBAS, it will say, like, these are all the members up and running. But in actual case, there is one member down. So we are not able to propagate that uh, back to the LBAS to see, like, whenever you query LBA LBAS, it has to say these members are down. So those are all the things that we are working on. I think these are the developers from our team, uh, uh, the uh, friends from <laughs> eBay, and uh, the Maha and Bharat are currently working on uh, LBAS uh, in paper. I think that's all I have. If I think we have more time for questions so that uh, we are here to answer like whatever uh, questions we have. So before that, I have some questions. So how many of you are running LBAS in Prad? Okay. So others, you have uh, their own uh, uh, management solutions or because we are trying we are having some uh, uh, our own custom solution and we are trying to migrate like we have migrated some of them so there are some challenges that we faced on migration also i think uh, one of my friend from ebay they gave a presentation on that that uh, vancouver submit okay yeah questions and here uh, anand is there and our pm Product manager Anant also there. Yeah. So it looks like you have some code that you're kind of carrying locally for patches. Or yeah. Kind of sure. Yeah. So how is, are you pushing things upstream, or what things are you pushing upstream, or how does that translate into going? Uh, yeah. We are, We have. Yeah, we can. So we have. What? Yeah. We we want to push actually. So there are plans. Uh, at least we thought like we will have it in GitHub so that people can comment. So before that, we have to go through the process. Like uh, so, your uh, actually, let me start. So you're coding it. Not yet, not yet. But we can, uh, we, yeah, we can do that. But we have to go through the process. Like you have to have a blueprint and then uh, uh, stack words and stuff. Yeah, you should not do that, like a public repo. Which is super sure. Secure. Yeah, that that we can help actually. You, you can uh, meet after this, and then we can help you. So yeah, a couple of my developers also talked about in the Vancouver summit where uh, the UI also customized uh, uh, to include. Uh, uh, SSL certificate uploads and then you know binding to the whips and stuff like that, but it's a matter of you know finding the time. So you yeah. could imagine actually when we were a combined company, eBay and PayPal, we uh, have you know larger footprint of the load balancers. So the load balancers as a service itself, we wrote it for two and a half years to make sure it is taking you know, both eBay and PayPal production today. And uh, you can imagine actually how many whips and pools that we have, and platform as a service on top of that that we've also built it uh, you know over the years, right? So if you want to migrate from the existing lo load balancer service into the L L L uh, we call it as LBMS, actually load balancer management service to LBS. That migration itself a big project for us. So basically identifying the time for the developers, you could imagine actually only four developers now to each com for each company. And how much time you will have to satisfy your business needs versus you know how much you can push it upstream. But definitely you know we wanted to push that to upstream for sure. And we have some breathing room now. And we wanted to definitely do that. So to answer your question, yes. So uh, we'll share you, uh, our information to you, and then we could work on that. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Anything else? So and also, you know, we looked at you know bunch of other things also. If you look at you know, the SSL cells, right? The V1 APIs, we they, we don't even have. We didn't even have you know SSL APIs, but we have to wait for the community to you know make it happen. That took more than a year to come in. But we are already put together a project to move away from your, you know, homegrown LBAS to L, uh, community LBAS. We can't wait for that to happen because your project is going to be in jeopardy, right? So we took a lot of effort to implement all of those. Of course, we got to partner with our, you know, vendors also to make it happen. And now it's part of, you know, Liberty and then Kilo, and we can, you know, uh, take this code and then see actually how much of a difference between our API version and then you know, uh, you know, the community version. And people started integrating with all these APIs also, other layers. Now, you know, you have to ask them to make it. They'll ask tons of questions. Hey, you just told me six months back this API. Now you're asking me to move to other one. 
and uh, you know what I'm going to get out of it, right? So, so it's a lot of you know internal things also you need to deal with when you work with communities, and I, I'm sure actually everybody is doing the same thing, right? If you don't have the well-defined APIs, and <laughs> all right, anything else? Yeah. Yeah, so the actually we have a configuration where you can uh, do uh, customize the health check itself. Like there is there are health check. It's there in L LBAS itself, and where, where uh, you can you will have for example uh, 80 you run something, then it will uh, tell uh, TCP like or HTTP, right? Yeah. But that, that was a community version. But uh, all over eBay and PayPal, uh, they just don't work with you know HTTP and ECB. Uh, yeah. So Exactly. So we have ECP monitoring that community didn't have it, so we have to implement that, right? Otherwise, you can't migrate some of our WIPs and then monitors to these APIs. That's one thing. And uh, what, what was the, you know, another big challenge that we had in terms of, uh, uh, no, so say we have a clear API where you could query the load balancers, and it will exactly tell you the member status. No, um, Newton doesn't have it at all. But without that, actually, you know, you can't live in a dark where, you know, what's the health of your services, right? So things like that. Uh, yeah. So previously, the LBMS that uh, he told is uh, actually going to the LB and then querying the state. The LBAS has its own state now. That's the, that's the one that I was talking about, the sync issues. The LBAS state is not actually reflecting the real state of the LB. Uh, so that's, that's, the, that's the one problem that, because when the LB goes down, uh, there should be a way in which the LB has to, can publish the same message, but that the LBAS is looking for, and then update its member status. That's not yet there. Yeah, so that's one thing. And also, you know, if you are a larger enough enterprise where you have hundreds of hundreds of load balancers, and these are being managed by, you know, some different system or maybe some kind of scripts also, like, you know, layer seven rules, if you have complex layer seven rules. And if you are going to be dedicating LBA, LBAS to completely manage those LBAs, you can't change anything in the back end, right? And how we are going to be you know, taking this data, because your source of truth is going to be the device. You could say, hey, I'm the source of truth. But you know, there will be a you know, difference between the actual set of the infrastructure versus you know, what you have in the database. How are you going to be making sure that you know, somebody is you know, changing behind the scene, and you, you need to make sure that actually your database is up to date. So we have built all those you know, corner cases in our you know, homegrown solution, but LBAS doesn't have it. But if you are in the you know, path of migration from your homegrown to you know, community, you have to keep these people out of you know, LBAS, uh, load balancers. And unless otherwise you have the featured parity, whatever they are using, uh, typically you know, any operations teams, right? So they have you know, complex rules always to satisfy business needs. And you can't say, hey, my LBAS doesn't support it, you can't support that in the load balancer, right? So how are you going to be making sure that uh, you know, whatever you are driving th uh, through the API changes are going to be reflected in the LB? At the same time, whatever you are directly doing in the load balancers are going to be reflected in the other side of the fence as well, so that you keep the consistency. So these are all the challenges when, you know, if you don't have the green field, and if you are going to be taking the inf existing infrastructure and take all those load balancers and push it into that, there's a lot of money involved in it. It's not like, hey, I'm going to be completely replacing all these load balancers with the newer ones, so some millions of millions of dollars involved in it. It's not going to be a trivial task. Yeah. So do you have uh, the need of uh, uh, increasing or decreasing or massively the number of virtual machines in the load balancer? Yeah, yeah. So, so we don't have, so I would say actually, you know, uh, we don't have auto scaling, but actually we have manual flux up, flux down based on your traffic pattern or maybe, you know, there is a growth for your application. Specifically in eBay and PayPal case, you know, you could imagine if we grow, you know, two digit every year, and uh, you expect your applications to grow as well. And for that, we have platform as a service, and then as a developer, you get into that, uh, you know, platform as a service UI or the CLI or whatever that is, and you say, okay, I create, you know, I want increase ten percent of my application pool. Then spins up the VM, then it needs to, you know, roll out the code and add it to the load balancer, mark them up, and making sure that you have right ECVs. So we have the end-to-end -end automation from all the way from you know, developer experience, uh, from the developer box to the production. So we have self-services uh, you know, for most of uh, our applications. So we have manual flux up, flux down, but actually you know, we wanted to absolutely you know, have the hands off and then flux up at night, one o'clock, without even having anyone to involve. But uh, you know, that's a long way to go in terms of Okay, there are multiple triggering points. Okay, you just don't want to catch up. Say, suppose you know you uh, you run out of capacity at eighty uh, percent or eighty percent, and maybe just one spike, and then are you going to be you know, running, uh, you know, creating hundred VMs and then add it to the pool, or maybe what's your cooldown period? So you need to 
understand all of this, you know, different you know, spike patterns and then act accordingly. So what is your cool-off uh, uh, cool period? And do the, you know, uh, uh, the plug up automatically. But for that, actually, we need to have you know, a lot of data and then drive that pattern. So that so we are definitely working on as part of platform as a service capability. Yeah, the pass, guys, like uh, actual use of LBAS, when the user says, like, I want to deploy this app, like, say, in 10 instances, the pass uses LBAS in an effective way to make yeah. that happen. Uh, and also, you know, uh, how much time it takes for you to you know, spin up the VM and then roll your code, it depends on the size of your package size. It might be, you know, uh, by the time actually you roll out, it will be two, three minutes. The, the traffic itself might be winding down that point of time. And that's where actually the flux up, flux down is one use case. Definitely we are looking at Docker as the solve for that. Uh, rather than being you know, completely relying on the VM and roll out the code. And, uh, you know, uh, it's a lot of things needs to happen in the application area also. If you have, a, have you know, half a terabyte of code base you wanted to push across the infrastructure, it's going to be impossible to, you know, do it within one or two minutes, right? So the application also needs get, to get ready for the contain containers, right? It has to be a microservice rather than being, you know, very monolithic code base and you can roll it out. Right. So there are a bunch of things needs to happen, the real flux up, flux down, auto scaling. So that all look good in the, you know, demos, but in the real, real world, if you are a company of, you know, 20 years of, uh, in the industry, you know how much of code base that you have, and you, it, it won't change over the, overnight, right? If you have a simple Node app, yeah, why not? I'm sorry? The partners, like vendors, He's asking what are the vendors. Oh, no, actually, yeah. <laughs> so I'll tell you, right, so the load balancing, if you are in a web company, right, if you, you know, how you deployed your applications and then, uh, you know, your ops architecture is being evolved over the period of time, what kind of best practices you had in managing those, you know, all those whips and pulls. Because, you know, every transaction that is coming into our infrastructure, it, it is money involved in it. Say, you could very well say, hey, I take a HA proxy and then put it on it. But making sure that it will run for the scale and a lot of you know other operational you know experience that you gained on the vendor devices are much more than what you are comfortable in HA proxy of course you know uh, where we wanted to go uh, it, it depends on you know I, I, I don't want to say that actually yeah okay hey, vendors actually we wanted to completely move out so it depends on actually your business problem that you are trying to solve rather than being religious about, hey, I want to run everything on open source rather than being partnering with the vendor because you know, we wanted to leverage both the world, right? So we have you know, best practices that we, we have figured out and the upgrade path for the devices and we are very much comfortable with that. It's not that actually we have just one and if we have two, you have always the choice. It's not that actually price point of view in terms of uh, you know, a user. And also, you know, vendors also will have, you know, bugs in there, you know, SSL offloading or maybe some other issues in there, you know, firmware itself, it takes, you know, some, uh, some time to fix it. Instead of completely relying on one, one vendor for your whole business, better to have a choice, right? Because everybody will have, you know, hardware and software will have bugs, actually. There is no, uh, you know, secret in that. And we just won't want to, you know, take re really, really bleeding edge and then risk our business by trying out something just like that, right? So it's not, it's not about just money. So the reliability and then availability of your uh, you know, services itself in terms of business point of view. So we have two. So of course, you know, different use cases, uh, um, you know, we wanted to try out, you know, different other solutions also. But one thing actually, whatever, uh, you know, we do, we wanted to be, uh, you know, very, very careful. So if you are, you know, QA environment and then LNP at production, we wanted to have the unified you know, infrastructure, all the way from the hardware to software. So that actually whatever you test, you deploy the same thing in production also. You could very well say, hey, I test my load balancing solution on HA proxy, but production is completely different. You know, you don't know actually what is going to break in production if you roll it out. But how effectively use all these devices in different environments so that actually you don't run into, you know, different variables. Because you, in a larger infrastructure, it's very hard to troubleshoot actually what is going wrong. Say, if your transaction is taking, uh, you know, instead of you know taking three seconds, if it is taking four seconds, it's a big deal for a company of our size, right? It, for the business, it doesn't matter whether you use X vendor or Y vendor or open source. You always want to drive down your transaction time. That's the business goal, not you know saving money on just catch a proxy, right? So it depends on the business trade-off that you wanted to take. But at least we can tell that we run yeah. both hardware and software. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> both. So that's.
Yeah, and also, you know, virtuals what? also, right? So virtuals, uh, we are trying virtuals as well. So we are completely yeah. on the, to be very honest, actually, we are on the, you know, physical devices. So that's what we are comfortable very much in terms of in SSL offload cards. So if you take, you know, another 10 seconds to process your SSL, your transaction time is already gone. The PayPal customer already left, right? T left the terminal. So you want to save that or you want to save this, right? So of course, you know, we wanted to have agility and uh, we wanted to move towards uh, virtual machines also. But we are working with our partners uh, very, very collaboratively on that. Because today, if you want to you know, bring in a couple of load balances, put it into your infrastructure rack, operationalize you know, how much time it takes, versus, OK, if you're on a virtual machine, if you have a QCAV image, you know, spin up that VM into anywhere, uh, anywhere in your compute racks, and then bring them online, and make sure that it is working for the routing and the layer seven, and you know, SL terminus and all those things, then you, you could make it happen. But that's the path to get there. But we are definitely working with our vendors on that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Any other question? Do you have one? No. You actually answered my question. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, he wanted the, the. I was going to ask, you know, from a physical about some of the techniques before you go to virtual. Yeah. Yeah. What was the relationship to having virtual load yeah. balances before you Yeah. It's agility versus performance. Yeah, so, what, yeah. what is more important for you? Agility is, of course, very important, but not at the cost of performance. Right. But the, um, mostly the vendor gives the, the, the abstract API they give, the, the agent that is running will work for their both uh, uh, the hardware version and the software version. That yeah. Because their API is same as for them. Yeah. So I'll tell you, you know, um, we were on virtuals for one of our vendor. And we rolled out in one of our available zone that we initially built. We wanted to go virtuals everywhere. And uh, we are very near to, uh, very much near to the holiday. And we wanted to bring that particular available zone to track our 20% our 10% of our traffic during the holidays. We test, you know, performance testing before we light it up in the entire data, uh, entire data center that we built it for that particular holiday season. And you know, everything is same everywhere. And then we started comparing actually why this particular available zone is taking more you know, transaction times and then more timeouts in terms of uh, you know the budget we have for every service. Okay, if we are trying more than you know, a millisecond, uh, for a certain number of millisecond, you just want to time out. You don't want to wait for that anymore. You want to go and try it out in you know, other availability zone. And by the time, actually, when you switch to other one, the transaction time for that uh, customer who is sitting in the you know, store or maybe online is really spinning there, right? So we tested that and then realized, actually, what is the new variables that we introduced? We identified two, three variables, old bonds, or we one of that. Then. We just got only four weeks to replace all of that with physicals, right? <laughs> you could imagine actually how difficult it is going to be, right? Of our size, uh, you know. We, uh, so that's what actually I, I'm sure actually we rushed on that. So we should have not done that. So we got to procure the load balancers, put operation streams within three, two, three, uh, two, three weeks, build all of them, make sure that you have the right VLANs, the right interfaces, and then we'll light them up. It was a nightmare actually. You know, thing is year and half back, not. Last holiday to last holiday. Anything else? All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, everyone.